My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, we will make our first example of an item, an equipment item or an inventory item that can be assigned to an item key. So item keys by default are X and V and with our HUD, they should be displayed here when any item is assigned to these keys. So all items cannot be assigned to an item key and actually all the ones that we implemented so far in previous tutorial in previous tutorials if you watched them uh, none of them are actually assignable because for instance the power bracelet can be used automatically when you try to lift a stone the money bag just changes the maximum amount of of money but there is no there is not yet uh, any item that can be assigned to an item key and just used by the player by pressing that item key. So we'll do a very simple example of such an item. Uh, first let me remove this, this is old code, sorry. And this very simple example will be a life potion. So I've picked this sprite from Max from the Trillium project. Um, but it's not really relevant to, to this tutorial. It's just to have a working example. Uh, so when you create an item, um, if you forgot how to do it, please watch the tutorial about treasures, but you need to edit this, I, this entities slash items sprite and add an animation with the name, the ID of your item. So it will be life potion for us. Uh, we can create it first, by the way, life potion. This is the ID. Life Potion. Christopho. GPLv3, because it's a Lua script. We'll fill it later. But yeah, we create a, an animation here in our sprite. Um, the, and yeah, the source image will be items slash life potion. This is the PNG file that we just saw. And then we'll create a direction in this animation. And actually the default uh, is, is, is already correct here. It's a 16 by 16 pix, um, sprite. So that's good. And the origin is correct, 813. Okay, great. So we are almost ready. We also want um, a dialogue. To be displayed when we find the item. So treasure dot the name of the item dot the variant number of the item. So here it will only be one because we don't want multiple variants for this item. We we just want to start with a very basic example. Okay, you found a life potion. Drink it to recover some hearts and that's it cool so uh, first of all like power bracelet we want to save the position state you you either have a potion or you don't have one so we can do item set save game variable position and usually I I write here, I choose a variable name called position underscore in the name of the item. So this will be a saved, va saved value of type integer. It will be zero if we don't have the life potion and it will be one if we have it and there is only one variant. So one little drawback of that approach is that it's either you have it or you don't have it. But one ha what happens when you drink it? We'll say that we remove it and what happens if you already have it and you find find another one? Um, so if, if your potion is a, a unique treasure in your game, uh, that's not a problem. But if you already have one in, and you find another one, but you already have it, it will not really have an effect um, with this approach because we didn't set up any notion of amount on our potion. But we will do it in more complex examples later, like 
for a bow you have an amount of arrows things like that uh, but for now we want just a small treasure chest with the life potion and the sprite should be displayed by the way in, in these drop down menus variant number one and I guess that's it maybe you want to save the state of your of your treasure as you want um, okay we can we can test that even if nothing much will happen we should see the dialogue in the sprite you find a life potion drink it to recover some hearts okay so the life potion still is not associated to any item key here and to do so well the ideal way would be to implement an inventory menu in our pause menu but um, we'll do that later and actually before doing it i wanted precisely to have a few examples of uh, assignable items so we're starting the other way around let's say we create some inventory items and later we will do the inventory screen uh, okay so for now we will just say that the item is assignable otherwise the engine won't let us assign it to an item command set as assignable true and well we don't need that one but when we find the item on obtained unobtaining maybe the difference by the way between unobtained and unobtaining is that unobtaining is called immediately when you touch the item and unobtained is called after the dialogue the dialogue that says you found a life potion but as soon as we obtain it we obtain it we want to assign it to the first slot we have two slots which are uh, maps to X and V keyboard keys by default if you want more slots that's possible but not directly supported by the engine you can still do it in Lua and it is this very item that we want to assign so if you have a lot of items of course this approach will be uh, not will not be great because any, any time we obtain an item uh, it will be assigned to the item key and, and replace the previous one so this is just a temporary measure until we have a very nice inventory subscreen okay now the potion is assigned to X here so if I press X what happens actually nothing <laughs> well not nothing this function is called and by default it does nothing we have to fill we have to do define whatever uh, behavior we want to happen with that item so what we want is to let's say we want to give seven hearts to the player so probably game set or no get games add life um, seven times four 20, 28 if you prefer and item set finished it will uh, restore the control to the player because by default when we are in state using an item the player can no, can no longer move the hero that's because a lot of items are for example weapons or they are displaying some special animations so the hero has a particular state but you can notify the engine that it's finished and then the hero um, yeah the player gets back control of the hero okay so let's try to hurt ourselves to see if it works it does <laughs> um, maybe you want to play a sound maybe you want to play a sound oops so I have a sound called heart which will be fine and another improvement is that if we already have all our life so if game get life is equal to game get max life then 
well, we can display a dialogue to say you already have all your hearts. No need to waste your life potion. Life potion not needed, for example. And else we do, oops, we restore the life, we play the sound. And in both cases, we immediately give control back to the hero. Okay, so life potion not needed. This is our new dialogue. You already have all your hearts. Cool. I should have tried with all my hearts first. Okay, so here I don't have any code that removes, that consumes the potion, so I can use it indefinitely. If I try again this time, my life is full by the way, it will show that new dialogue. Um, so yeah, what we want to do is probably to remove the possession state when we use, when we drink the potion um, with item set variant zero. This is equivalent to say, to set the value of that integer to zero. Um, like I said before, it can be zero or one because we, we only have one variant. And if we want to change the value, we could call game set value, but uh, item set variant also works. And this time, if I use it, it should disappear from my uh, item icon. Because yeah, but when you no longer are in possession of an item, it will automatically be unassigned from any item key. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> it's still assigned. Set variant zero. I'm not sure of what happened. Ah, okay, maybe it's not automatically unassigned. Because when I press X this time, nothing happens. Um, okay, never mind, that's a small detail. Um, anyway, like I said before, maybe for a, a real project, you would not want to simply remove the position state, but maybe make a counter allow to have multiple uh, potions because here I can take a second one but if I use only one of them then I have zero left because there is no counter so it's not great so yeah maybe you can make a counter so give a notion of amount to your uh, item and we will see how to do that with uh, probably some other examples like bows and arrows and another approach is to do like in Zelda, you can keep the bottle empty and uh, getting it again would refill the bottle. A lot of things are possible. And again, you can check our projects. Um, okay, so what was important in this tutorial is the fact that items can be assigned to an item command if you call set assignable. And then when the player calls, um, presses the item command, that will call this event on using, where you define the behavior of your item. And when you're done, so here we are done immediately, but sometimes we're more, with more complicated items that show animations and stuff. Uh, it's not immediate, but it's later in a timer. But anyway, when it's finished, you call set finished and it will restore control back to the hero. I guess that's enough for now and we'll see you soon for new uh, and more elaborate examples of items. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.